Today we're taking a look at the Sexy Series 6 new Apple Watch from Apple. Say that one ten times fast. Sexy Series 6, Sexy Series 6, Sexy Series 6. Guess it's actually not that hard. What's up YouTube? It's your boy. BMAC. And if this is your first time here to the channel, welcome, thanks for stopping by, make sure you smash that subscribe button with all notifications turned on so that you never miss another video on this channel, and if you've been here before, or if you're already subscribed, welcome back. So I know a lot of you have been waiting for this video, the review of the Apple Watch Series 6. I truly do feel as though my life has become better because of this Apple Watch, so with the new Series 6 here now, how does this one hold up? What's this baby looking like? So let's break this puppy down. Let's start things off as we normally do with the design of the Apple Watch Series 6 and how things are looking on the outside. Not a whole lot has changed here, design-wise, on the Apple Watch Series 6. In fact, we're getting a lot of the same. You still have that updated design that was originally introduced with the debut of the Apple Watch Series 4. And if you're not familiar with what that upgraded design was, basically you're getting a 30% larger screen and an 11% thinner body. And you are once again getting that always-on retina display like we got debuted with the Series 5. And in addition to that, you are getting the return of water resistance as we would hope, you're actually getting 50 meters of water resistance on the Apple Watch Series 6, making the Apple Watch Series 6 swim-proof. So, yes, you could swim with this thing. Or bathe, or shower, or hot tub it. Actually, I don't think you're supposed to do any of those things, but swim-proof, yes. You are also getting that digital crown with the haptic feedback. Your built-in compass that we got debuted in the Series 5. A now always-on altimeter, so not just an altimeter, an always-on altimeter, so an altimeter that's always on. I don't know why I felt compelled to give that so much explaining. Your second generation speaker and microphone. And of course your GPS connectivity with optional cellular connectivity as well. So like I said, a lot of the same, some new things that we got in the Series 6 here, but all this is complete with three different finishes and several different colors to choose from. With those three different finishes, you're getting options of aluminum, stainless steel, or titanium, and colors associated with those finishes. For the aluminum, you get either silver, space gray, gold, blue, or product red colors. For the stainless steel finish, you're getting the option of either silver, graphite, or gold. And for the titanium finish offering, you're getting titanium and the ever so beautiful space black color with a DLC or diamond-like coating. Yes, I went with the graphite stainless steel Apple Watch Series 6 to match my iPhone 12 Pro Max. I went for the matching situation here this year. But if you have the budget for it, if you can swing it, woo that space black man, Marvelous. With the aluminum Apple Watch Series 6, you're getting an Ion X glass display. And with the stainless steel and titanium Apple Watch Series 6s, you are getting that sapphire crystal. And then last but certainly not least, you are getting that ceramic and sapphire crystal back. A completely redesigned back for the Series 6 that is going to allow for some of the other features we're about to talk about. So, a lot of the same things we've seen in the Series 5 and the Series 4 design-wise, but as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But we did start talking about the Apple Watch Series 6 display just a few minutes ago, so what about that Apple Watch Series 6 display? What's it looking like? With the Series 6, we are getting that always-on LTPO OLED display, which offers up to 1,000 nits of brightness, which personally I think is quite impressive considering the size of this device. And I have rarely, if ever, been in a situation where I wish the Apple Watch Series 6 was brighter. It, it's bright for pretty much any need that I have. And that's probably in large part because the Apple Watch Series 6 is actually 2.5 times brighter when dimmed, even in brightly lit situations. One thing I am going to have to complain about here though, which I was hesitant to talk about, but it hasn't been fixed yet, so I guess it's worth mentioning. In full disclosure, this might be fixed in a future software update, or at least it'll be an option in a future software update, but Here's a problem. With the Series 6, in addition to having an always-on display, the display itself is also always active. In other words, you don't actually have to raise your wrist and rotate it towards you to activate the Apple Watch Series 6, and in fact, even if it's dimmed and facing away from you, it's always active, so just tapping on the screen here, it'll launch a complication. Sounds good, sounds cool, but I've actually found it to be a little bit more trouble than it is helpful. I cannot tell you how many times I've been crossing my arms or doing something where I've accidentally pressed something on my Apple Watch display, even when it's dimmed and when it's otherwise 
what's supposed to be inactive. I never had this problem in the Series 5 because even though the Apple Watch Series 5 was an always on display Apple Watch, it wasn't an always active display as I'm calling it. So I didn't have accidental presses. I didn't accidentally send any tap back messages to my grandma at 2 a.m. It's happened. So in order to turn off the always active part of the always on display, you gotta just turn off the always on display altogether. And I really wish Apple would come out with a update, probably through software, that will allow us to actually turn off the always active part of the always on retina display. Whew. Finagled my way through that one. Almost messed that one up, but I got it right. Got it right. But next up, let's talk about one of the most important parts of the Apple Watch, and personally one of the main reasons why I got the Apple Watch to begin with all those generations ago health features and what the Apple Watch Series 6 is offering as it relates to health. The health features that are available on the Apple Watch are continuously getting expanded and improved. And the Series 6 is no exception. With the Series 6, we are still getting the return of the electrical heart rate sensor, otherwise known as the ECG reader. And we are still getting the heart rate sensor, which is now actually a third generation optical heart rate sensor, which of course means we are still getting real-time heart rate monitoring alerts, which means we could be alerted through a push notification if our heart rate is too low or too high. And adding to the list of health features, fall detection. You're also getting emergency SOS and international emergency calling if you have the cellular version of the Apple Watch Series 6. Noise monitoring, which will actually monitor the levels of noise around you and let you know if things are too loud. A very underrated feature, I think, by the way. I don't think too many people talk about noise monitoring on the Apple Watch, but that is a lot of potential. And now for the big boy, one of, if not the main feature of the Apple Watch Series 6, we are now getting a blood oxygen sensor built in to the Apple Watch. A sensor that will literally read your blood to see if you have proper oxygen levels within it. Now I can't really speak to the accuracy of the blood oxygen sensor, but in my testing, it works, and like I said, it works well. With health features working in the background, like fall detection, emergency SOS, heart rate monitoring, and now blood oxygen levels monitoring. There's a lot that the Apple Watch is doing behind the scenes that you might not actively see it doing. And the blood oxygen sensor is right in line with that. We do have a blood oxygen sensor reader app, but throughout the day, your Apple Watch is going to, when it can, automatically read your blood oxygen levels. And even though I haven't had the alert yet, which is a good thing, will notify you if your blood oxygen levels dip too low. And I will say the animation within that blood oxygen reader app is awesome. And how this is actually possible is through four LED clusters and four photodiodes on the back of the Series 6 with that redesigned back of the Series 6 we alluded to earlier. In terms of the LED clusters, you have green, red, and infrared LEDs that shine light onto the blood vessels in your wrist. And then the photodiodes built into the back of the Series Series 6 will literally measure the amount of light reflected back. Apple then uses some of their magic and advanced algorithms to then calculate your blood oxygen levels and will relay back that percentage to you. All based on the color of your blood. How wild is that? Apple just, you always blow my mind. Now I will say the blood oxygen sensor does have its limitations, but this is to be expected with a first generation sensor being added to the Apple Watch. For one thing, when the blood oxygen sensor is actually reading your blood oxygen levels, you do have to be still and your wrist should ideally be resting on a flat surface. So health wise, Apple Watch Series 6, probably one of, if not the best health watches, smart watches you could have on your wrist available on the market. But all this is really only possible because of the performance of the Series 6 and what's on the inside that is making all this happen. With the Apple Watch Series 6, we are getting that dual core processor that we've seen for a couple generations now. But this time around, we're getting the S6 chip built in to the Series 6 as opposed to the S5 chip we had in the Series 5. With the new S6 chip, Apple promising to be 20% faster than the S5 chip. We've come a long way since the days of the Series 1 Apple Watch where I swear sap dripped faster than how long it took to launch an app on that thing. And now with how long it used to take me to open an app on the Series 1, I could switch between two apps like five times. Crazy. Crazy to see how far this thing has come. In addition to the S6 chip, you are also getting the Apple W3 chip, which is a wireless chip and basically is just gonna make your overall Wi-Fi and Bluetooth performance better. And of course, that does mean you're getting Bluetooth 5.0 support with five gigahertz Wi-Fi support. And then you get that W3 chip alongside the Apple U1 wideband chip, a chip we've seen Apple incorporating in its recent products a lot lately. We're gonna see a lot more of utilization of these U chips in the future, mark my words. All of this with the cherry on top of 32 gigs of storage space being on the Apple Watch Series 6. Gone are the days where I used to complain about storage space on the Apple Watch. Now we literally have as much storage space on the Apple Watch Series 6 as we have on some other products that Apple is offering, which is 
Still just mind blowing <clears throat> iPad. But I know what a lot of you are thinking with all this going on in such a small device, what's the battery life looking like? And can you expect the Apple Watch Series 6 to last all day? Well, with the Series 6, we're obviously getting that same rechargeable lithium ion battery with performance that Apple is advertising as all day battery life up to 18 hours with normal usage. This is in part because of the 300 or a little bit more than 300 milliamp hour battery capacity we have built in to the battery of the Apple Watch Series 6 and the efficiency of that new S6 chip. So outside of speed and performance, the chip also helps with battery life. So that's why we get new chips, even though the Apple Watch is already so fast. I've even been able to squeak out an entire day and a half of battery life on the Series 6 with a workout track and included. But I've said this before and I will say this again, if you have the cellular model of the Series 6 like I do and with any other model of the Apple Watch currently available, nothing will drain the Apple Watch battery faster than an LTE connection. It's kind of unfortunate that the Apple Watch is basically can't handle how much power is necessary for LTE connections on the Apple Watch because I have literally seen the battery drain percentage point by percentage point as the minutes go by when I'm using it. So the more you use the LTE connection of your cellular Apple Watch, if you do have the cellular Apple Watch, the faster the battery is gonna drain. But if you're not using the LTE connection or you just have the GPS version of the Apple Watch, you're probably gonna be fine having at least a day, if not a day and a half of battery life. So with all that having been said, here are my final thoughts on the Apple Watch Series 6. All in all, I still think the Apple Watch is the best smartwatch on the market, and now more so than ever before with the Series 6 being available. But I know a lot of people have Apple Watch these days, so here's my breakdown in case you're thinking about upgrading. If you have the Apple Watch Series 5, it's really only worth upgrading to the Series 6 if you want that blood oxygen sensor, or if you want that always active display. If you're coming from the Series 4, I think the always on display will make a substantial difference in the way you're experiencing, the Apple Watch. I still do think the always on display has its limitations like we've talked about here on this channel before, but all in all, it just makes the Apple Watch feel like a much more updated pro level product with that always on display. And that alone could make the Series 6 worth the upgrade over the Series 4. If you have a Series 3, Series 2, Series 1, or God bless you, a Series 0, you're definitely gonna have a nice time upgrading. It's, it's gonna blow your mind what this thing is capable of now. But out the door, Apple Watch Series 6, Gotta give it a positive review. I love this thing. The Apple Watch just keeps getting better and better. I splurged a little bit by going for the graphite stainless steel version this year with the cellular connection. But even if you just get the space gray aluminum version like I used to every single year, you're gonna love the Apple Watch. Do yourself a favor, pick one up, you're gonna love it. As always, if you guys are interested in learning more about the Apple Watch Series 6 or just to cop one of these bad boys for yourself, you guys could always head to my affiliate link, bmac.link slash Apple Watch S6. bmac.link slash Apple Watch S6, or as always, there will be a clickable link in the video description box below as well, so check that out if you're interested. And with that having been said, I am in the mood for a hike. I think I'm gonna go on a hike and track it on my Apple Watch. I will see you guys in my next video. Ooh, nope, never mind. 14 degrees outside, maybe I'll go take a nap and track my sleep instead, which is actually the polar opposite of what I was just about to do. But, Series 6, it can do it all. Okay, nap time. <clears throat>